there, this is Kim with Porch in It. Welcome to my porch today. Today is day 15, so we're getting into, um, let me see, we're getting into 40, Job 40 and 42. And remember, this is the Blue Letter Bible. I got it offline. The Blue Letter Bible, it looks like this. It gives you every day for 365 days how to read through the Bible chronologically. Um, and it's supposed to be like the most um, precise. So that's what we're doing this year. So every time I write day, whatever day it is, it's uh, right now it's January 15th. So it's day 15, so I'm gonna be doing that all the way through. So you'll know what day of the year it is con compared to the chronological Bible plan that I'm doing. So day 40, um, last time I was on here, I wanted to read out of the Amplified. So I'm gonna take my Amplified as well as the King James and then the King James is with it. So I'm just gonna do it this way from now on because I think this will be a lot easier for us to understand because most of us have a King James Bible or a new King James, which is similar. And um, Amplified just amplifies it. So it's gonna help bring understanding with some of the things that I don't understand when I'm reading. Sometimes I'll be like, well, what is that? So I wanna be able to get it right away while we're on here together <laughs> and so and if you all have any questions you could ask me and I can look things up or we can you know in any prayer requests we can pray together any praise reports we can praise together um, let, let's this I want this to be a fun uh, you know site for you to go on and read the word with me pray with me sing with me pray you know believe with me for things you know and declare things and learn how to just live live in the in the Lord live in the word live in the Lord together so uh, today the day 15 Job 40 so I'm gonna read it but sometimes I might go over and I'll tell you if I'm changing because um, I don't want it to be um, I want it to be smooth and let you just enjoy it so Get your Bibles out. If you have an Amplified, that's good too because I, I am going to do that as well. So praise the Lord. Job 40 says, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. So the Lord is saying it still. Moreover, the Lord said to Job, Shall he who find fault with the Almighty contend with him? He who disputes with God, let him answer it. Then Job replied to the Lord, Behold, I am a small account and vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand upon my mouth. This is the Amplified. I have spoken once, but I will not reply again. Indeed, twice have I answered, but I will proceed no further. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, saying, Gird up, gird up your loins now like a man. I will demand of you and you, you answer me. Will you also annul, set aside and render void my judgment? Will you condemn me, your God, that you may appear righteous and justified? Have you an arm like God or can you thunder with a voice like his? Since you question the man, manner of the Almighty's rule, deck yourself now with excellency and dignity of the supreme ruler and yourself. Undertake the government and yourself undertake the government of the world if you are so wise and array yourself with honor and majesty put forth the overflowings of your anger and look on everyone who is proud and abase him look on everyone who is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked where they stand if you are able so job bury and hide them all in the dust together and shut them up in the prison house of death if you can do all this job proving yourself of divine might, then will I, God, praise you also and acknowledge that your right hand can save you. Behold now the be behemoth, the hippopotamus, which I created, the behemoth, which I created as I did you. He eats grass like an ox. See now his strength is in his loins and his power is in the sinews of his belly. He moves his tail like a cedar tree. The tendons of his thighs are twisted together like a rope. 
His bones are like tubes of bronze. His limbs or ribs are like bars of iron. The hippopotamus is the first in magnitude and power and the works of God in animal life only. He who made him provides him with his sword-like tusks, or only God who made him can bring near his sword to master him. Surely the mountains bring him food where all the wild animals play. He lies under the lotus tree in the convert of the, or the covert of the reeds in the marsh. The lotus trees cover him with their shade. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, if a river is violent and overflows, he does not tremble. He is confident. Though the Jordan River swells and rushes against its mouth, can any take him when he is on the watch or pierce through his nose with a snare? In chapter 41, can you draw out the Levathon, the crocodile, with a fish hook or press down his tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope into his nose or pierce his jaw like with a hook or a spike? Will you make many supplications to you, begging to be spared? Will he speak soft words to you to coax you to treat him kindly? Will he make a covenant with you to take him for your servant forever? Will you play with a crocodile as with a bird or will you put him on a leash for your maidens? Will traders bargain over him? Will they divide him upon the, up among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay his hand upon him. Remember your battle with him. You will not do such an ill-advised thing again. Behold, the hope of his assailant is disappointed. One is cast down even at the sight of him. No one is so fierce and fool-hearted that he dares to stare up the crocodile. Who then is he who can stand before me, the beast's creator, or dares to contend with me? Who has first given to me that I should repay him? Whatever is under the whole heavens is mine. Therefore, who can have a claim against God? God who made the unmastered crocodile. I will not keep silence concerning his limbs, nor his mighty strength, nor his goodly frame. Who can strip off the crocodile's outer garment? Who can penetrate his double coat of mail? Who shall come within his jaws? Who can open the doors of his, of his lipless mouth, his extended jaw and, bar, and bare teeth? are terrible round about. His scales are the crocodile's pride, for his back is made of rows of shields shut up together as with a tight seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together so that they cannot be separated. His sneezing flash forth light with his eyes are like the reddish eyelids of dawn. Out of his mouth go burning torches and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostril goes forth smoke as, as out of a seething pot over a fire of rushes. His breath kindles coals and a flame goes forth from his mouth. In the crocodile's neck abides strength and terror dance before him. The folds of his flesh cleave together. They are firm upon him and they cannot shake when he moves. His heart is as firm as a stone, indeed, as solid as, a ne as neither millstone. When the crocodile raises himself up, the mighty are afraid because of the terror and the crashing they are beside themselves. Even if one strikes at him with the sword, it cannot get any hold, nor does the spear, the jar, or the javelin. He counts iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make the crocodile flee. Sling stones are treated by him as stubble. Clubs also are counted as stubble. He laughs at the rushing and the rattling of the javelin. His underparts are like sharp pierces of broken pottery. He spreads grove, grooves like a threshing sledge upon the mire. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a foaming pot of ointment. His swift darting makes a shining track behind him. One who would think the deep to be hoary with foam. Upon earth there is not the crocodile's equal, a creature made without fear, and he behaves fearlessly. He looks all mighty, beasts of prey, in the face without terror. He is a monarch over all the sons of pride. And now, Job, who are you who dares not arouse the unmastered crocodile, yet who dares resist me, 
the beast cre cre creator to my face. Everything under the heavens is mine. Therefore, who can have a claim against God? And then Job said to the Lord in chapter 42, I know that you can do all things and that no thought or purpose of yours can restra be restrained or thwarted. You said to me, who is this that darkens and obscures counsel by words without knowledge? Therefore, I now see I have, I have rashly uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. I had virtually said to you what you have said to me. Here I beseech you, and I will speak. I will demand of you, and you declare it to me. I had heard of you only by the hearing of the ear, but now my spiritual eyes see you. Therefore, I loathe my words, and I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. This is the humility. After the Lord had spoken the previous words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. Now, therefore, make seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourself a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept his prayer, that I deal not with you after your folly, in that you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Naamite went and did as the Lord commanded them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in the house. And they sympathized with him and comforted him over all the distressing calamities that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every man an earring of gold. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Gemma, Gemma, Jemiah, and the name of the second, Keziah, and the name of the third, Karen, Hapush. And in the land there were no women so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even to the fourth generation. So Job died an old man and full of days. What a wonderful ending to that story. And it's neat to see how he was letting Job know the things that you are saying or asking. Um, he was basically saying, I am God and you are, you are a, a, the man that I created, but I am God and I know all things. And this, this is the way it goes because you can't do these things without me. I'm the one who created you and the animals and everything, the world. So you can't t know or be able to do anything without me. And basically he put him back in his place in that way. But in the other way, Job did speak to his friends properly and his friends did not speak right to him because they were in pride about Job. Now Job was just um, wanting to to be able to speak life, but he didn't know that he was overstepping that, hey, this is God, God is in heaven. And he had hum humility right away and he said he was sorry. And so what a beautiful way that God just gave him even more. And he lived four generations. That is such a blessing. It says in Psalm 91, with long days, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation satisfying you in long days means you're healthy, you're able to be with your children, your grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and all the way to generations. So that's the blessing of the Lord, being able to be healthy with your family and know God and know his way and be humble and be able to know God is taking care of this. He knows everything. 
God is taking care of it. I don't have to try and do it. So, so Job had a misunderstanding at first, but God corrected him. But at the same time, God used Job to pray for his friends and, and help his friends to, to, to get to a point too where uh, they humbled themselves probably too because they realized what God said to them. And so we just praise you, Lord, and thank you for this good word that we're reading. And the Amplified Bible really amplifies it and helps us understand more. And we just want to know you, Lord. We want to serve you. We want to serve one another. You told us to, you came to serve, and we want to serve one another your word. We want to serve one another with prayer, with fellowship, friendship. We want to serve we want to be a servant of the Lord. We want to be a light on a hill. We want all men to be drawn to Jesus. And that's our desire. And we want to know your word. We want to understand and discern and be humble like Job at the end here. And receive the blessing of the Lord, double, triple, quadruple. Because we're focused on him and we're not coming against God. We're loving God and we're saying, God, you know. And we just glorify you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll see you next time on Porch Remember, your words are your way to victory.